Kante Jewel, welcome to our Conscious Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm so overexcited to be here. Thank you so much. It's so lovely. You are iconic. And this is such a great podcast. So thank you. (laughs) My first question to you needs to be, what are you wearing today? And I don't mean clothes. I mean, visage. Visage. Well, I'm wearing my brand, Ate Jewel Beauty, my foundation, which is about to launch, and also my blush of dreams. Um, I'm wearing Radiant Rav. It's available at Harrods and on my website, www.atejewelbeauty.com. And right, we're getting all of this out of the way. <laughs> get it all of it out of the way. And it's just been a labor of love and just makes me feel glowy and happy from the inside out. Are you wearing it on your eyes as well? For those of you, anyone who's seeing us visually, yeah, your eyes are looking amazing. Oh, thank you. That's something, a little something I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all that stuff out of the way. Now, Fifth, we have obviously mentioned that you have your own beauty brand, but one of the reasons I wanted you on, because you're also a beauty journalist. So plugging out of the way, we can rely on you when we're asking questions about makeup generally, you know, to, to have an overview and a knowledge that's deeper than any of ours as consumers, because we all just tend to go, well, I really like that. And then I don't know what yeah. much else about it, you know. Um, but you're also so well known for broadcasting. People might have seen you on This Morning. You've, I mean, you've been CNN, you know, you've done lots yeah. of different uh, broadcasting jobs and lots of different writing jobs. So tell us about the writing. Well, I mean, I've always loved beauty. For me, it's about self-expression, the artistry, you know, I studied history at university and I was always obsessed with power, identity and status and there's nothing different in the beauty industry in in terms of how we see ourselves, how we celebrate and visibility. So I've loved writing for everybody from Vogue to The Guardian, Marie Claire, um, Get the Gloss, I'm the beauty editor on Holly Willoughby's Wild Moon and I just love talking about beauty and well-being because it's all about the invisible i think people really underestimate beauty it's about how we see ourselves it's about power identity status and a little bit of magic and that's what i'm into (laughs) it's such a fascinating (laughs) subject the subject of i mean we you know today obviously makeup but beauty is a really interesting one a it's in the eye of the beholder (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) it's so subjective but b as you say there's there's power that comes with beauty it has the power to move you deeply a beautiful landscape can move you deeply and it has the power uh to make you think a certain way about someone or not or you know there's there's just so much and there's so much also between being put together i.e for me that means having your makeup on having your hair done wearing a decent outfit and being not put together and how that makes you feel. So it's a huge subject, I think, and to ignore it would be silly. We'd ignore it at our folly because we are never going to, as humans, we are never going to ignore the beauty industry. No, and I think historically there's never been a period in time that we haven't celebrated, we haven't identified and culturally being who we are without the power of color and makeup and perfume it's such a historical cultural marker of who we are and who we think we are you know during the pandemic I just woke up every day it was so it was such a scary time and I remember I started wearing red lipstick during the pandemic it just made me feel powerful and like I can do this and like I've got nowhere to go but I've got a red lip on and it's gonna be okay and, and it, it was, was just a, so yeah it was, it was a statement to yourself yeah time so I think it's very it's a, a very complex interesting multi-layered uh conversation but I think a lot of people dismiss it with this kind of 1950s it's about the male gaze it's about other people when it's about a deep relationship with yourself and its relationship with sustainability which is after all where we're coming from felicity kendall just about got away with it didn't she in the good life because she didn't she didn't wear makeup she didn't have a put together outfit her hair was all wispy and coming down in little bits and straggles even when she was covered in you know unnameable stuff from the bottom of the pigsty she was still cute right 
Yeah. We still <laughs> adored her because she wasn't put together. She just about got away with it. For the rest of us, <laughs> that kind of idea of, well, if I'm environmentally aware, I'm going to use less products. I'm so inevitably going to be less put together. I'm going to look less professional or whatever, you know, it is that we that we want to look like. It's not like that any, anymore. That's not the real mm. world. We we have to embrace a whole industry doing things differently. I completely agree. It's like being vegan. Like 30 years ago, that meant some crusty lentils in the back of a health food shop. And like, my goodness, how it has changed. So in terms of sustainability and being more minded about that and beauty, there's it's big business. It's it, it can be glamorous, it can be luxurious. There's brands I love, like Evolve and Upcycle, who it's not a marketing look, it's about making the world better and being more conscious and helping. You know, if we all do a little bit, it all adds up to helping the planet. And I mean, look at the wildfires that have been happening this summer. Look at what there is real world consequences that is not 50 years or 100 years, it's now. And as a mother, it's important to think about our children and grandchildren. And so that's why so many people are interested in making healthier, uh, more sustainable choices. And we talk on on this podcast quite a lot about that no one can do everything, but everyone yeah. can do something. So yeah. if we're making decisions about the stuff that we're using to make ourselves look more beautiful, say, um, they need to be great decisions. And so hence getting you on to give us, you know, help us make those informed decisions. Um, and it it is difficult. You've already mentioned there's an element of greenwashing. I remember when cruelty free, you could only find yeah. a cruelty free brand somewhere in the dusty corner of the back of the health food shop. Now yeah. it's everywhere. But then is it really everywhere? Because some of the big companies I know, they'll say cruelty free, and yet they're using an ingredient that has been tested on animals or is tested on another part of the world in anim on animals, for example. It's complex, isn't it? This isn't just, a oh, we'll do with some greenwashing and think we're doing the right thing. Yes, I do think every consumer um, should empower themselves with knowledge. We are so lucky in the digital age where you can Google, you can jump on and find information on the internet. But, you know, for me, being sustainable, being like green and being conscious means that that runs through the whole of your ethos. So like you're saying, not selling to regions which test on animals, having the courage of your convictions and not chasing that pound, you know? So I do think it's about empowering yourself, doing a little bit of research so you feel really good in your choices. And also there's amazing websites that you could go on and like, uh, like I love Goop, I love all these websites and uh, content beauty basically which do the work for you but also just have a little read follow people that you love who are sustainable beauty journalists like i love lisa oxen and my girl from from marie claire just follow people who are living that lifestyle and are really authentic and they believe in what they're doing and you're um an ambassador for the british beauty council right yes yes they do an awful lot of work in that sustainability arena, are you able to describe some of that? Is that your? Is that where you're? Um, where you work with them on that stuff? Well, I'm so proud. I'm so proud to be a beauty ambassador for the British Beauty Council. It's like a wild beauty dream come true. I've been in the industry <laughs> over twenty years, and it's literally Millie Kendall OBE is doing incredible work. I do a lot of work with diversity and inclusivity. Sustainability is also an incredible pillar that they work on, and it's about doing the reporting, making sure that people are really uh, there's a there's a level of accountability and overview in the industry so they do incredible work in you know i think many years ago it's a bit of a wild west out there and it's just about getting accountability and having a center an epicenter of excellence and millie does incredible work with the government and she's really a beauty pioneer ever since ruby and millie millie has been a beauty pioneer it's incredible and you've got the likes of bobby brown involved yeah. in, in that beauty council as well i mean these are these are big names in beauty aren't they heavy hitters and you know it's incredible so many people are attached to the beauty british beauty council like my friend karen hirons and 
just uh, Josh Wood. It's just, um, I don't know, it's like beauty, the beauty Oscars and high school reunion all mixed together. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, well, for me as a consumer who's interested in sustainability, I love the fact that they have a very much a core agenda of sustainability and making making stuff happen in that arena. So they've, you know, their recycling map that they've created where you can recycle your products, recycle the packaging, all of those things. Plastic solutions um, are coming out of their sustainable sustainable approach as well. Um, and there's a sustainable beauty coalition within the British Beauty Council, isn't there? Exactly. And it's, I think it's about making it less intimidating for consumers as well. I think people get so overwhelmed where you think, "What? I'm just one person, what can I do? But exactly. if all of us make a small change, we can make a big impact. So it could be as simple as wanting to invest in refills. Like I love L'Occitane. The They've done such a big push in the refillable program, the body shop. Just investing your money, your money is power. So where you put your money is really important because as a consumer, other brands are watching. And if you are proving that sustainability is something on the agenda for you, then guess what? Not because of the goodness of their hearts, but because of the, the, the pound and your beauty pound, they will come up to scratch. So, you know, you can be an activist with how you buy and where you buy. So our beauty pounds, as you say, are worth quite a bit in terms of what happens to the planet, in terms of you know, the difference Definitely. that we're able to make. Definitely. Beauty companies are wanting to chase your beauty pound. And if they realise that you are interested in sustainability, that you will not put up with products tested on animals in any region, then guess what? Things will change. So that's so you have the power just in your choices alone. And it's really interesting. I mean, you know, I looked at your website and obviously I read tons, you know, about beauty and makeup and all of those things and it's like you can change the world you know but just by being beautiful you can change the world by having the right face on you can um makeup can change the world but actually in this case it really can and we can kind of list through those ways what are we looking for i mean i can i can think of probably five things immediately has it been have the ingredients been tested on animals are the ingredients themselves sustainable who made them yeah. who farmed them who where did they come from and how were they transported what about the packaging is the package packaging sustainable and can we recycle it and where did that come from and you know immediately once you start really thinking about this and then you have all of those things if i'm making a formula times the power of the beauty business in the buck it's yeah. huge the beauty business isn't it worth billions and we all knew during, during the pandemic i think for the first time people understood the power of our industry of what it feels like to have you know when no one could cut and color their hair for for months at an end and the fact that it's about connection it's about it's a huge part of your identity and how you feel about yourself it's about you know you miss people were missing the chats people were missing the connection and I think the beauty industry is really underrated. We, you know, it's worth more than the British car industry. And is it really? About, yes. And it's about being taken seriously because we all know, you know, I know what I missed about the connection of being with my beauty people, having my hair done, that kind of community uh, environment. It's, it's a, you know, ultimately the beauty industry is about connecting with yourself, with others and feeling good. That's what I, that's what it means to me, feeling good from the inside out. And then when you feel good, you make good decisions and it's just a really beautiful, uh, virtuous circle. And, and I mean, a business that's that big has huge potential to change the dial, to change yes. the, the, the direction in which we're going here, um, toward a sustain, a more sustainable future. Definitely. I mean, honestly. I think that's what we all want. We want a healthy planet. We want healthy bodies. We want healthy communities. And it's about demanding more and asking more and spending where we know we'll get it. And can we trust the brands that say that, you know, which are the brands that you really trust? Because anyone can be greenwashing us. I can read a website and go, oh, well, that's good. They're recycling all of their, whatever they are recycling, you know, they're reusing their coffee cups in their office. 
um, actually, are they doing the big things that really matter? I think that's where we as consumers don't really know how much we can. Everyone's saying they're sustainable right now. How much are they really? Who are the brands we can really trust? Well, the brands I really trust and I know them, <laughs> like um, Laura from Evolve, she's doing incredible work, like down to upcycling of raspberry seeds in her product for exfoliation and like she's and the kind of inks she's using on packaging and people who really care about every step of the way of the process or the products they make and it's packed full of integrity i love the brand upcycle as well i think lossitan are doing really great work the beda i think the body shop these are brands that have integrity and they really want to make a difference. And I really respect that. And are accessible because, you know, you mentioned Goop earlier and I, you know, I have a guilty pleasure of, of having a quick look at the Goop website here and there and the newsletter comes through and I go, how much? <laughs> God bless. God I bless, you know, really. <laughs> I'm a mum. There's no way I can justify spending that much on my face, you know. <laughs> But brands that are accessible and are actually doing the work, you know, some of, and I worry about some of those massive brands like L'Oreal, are they really across their sustainable situation? Because how can they be? It's such a big brand. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many of them. Again, we as consumers have so much power. Jump on their Instagram, jump on uh, Twitter, for, like which is now known as X, you know, say something, use your voice ask questions, um, make people accountable. And I think that's the way we go forward. If we are so lucky, you know, back in, you know, 20 years ago, the beginning of my career, you could write a very strongly worded letter if you were irritated by something, which would probably end up in a bin. It is so public now. There's so much accountability. You can start a thread, you can do an Instagram, you can do a DM. There's, use your power, use the digital age, make yourself heard and, it's very hard to ignore. So ask the, the questions and make that people is the journalist accountable. In you, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> make people accountable. And you and yeah. we can all do it now. It's a, and and one person turns into two, turns into millions, and then people have to start being accountable. Okay. And you mentioned exfoliation just a little minute ago. That perhaps was a good example because I can yeah. remember the whole thing of hey, you know those beads in your exfoliator? You know, they're made of plastic. Yeah. Do you know where they're going? Do you know what's happening? Look at this turtle. You know, I mean, the turtle was the symbol, you know, inadvertently yeah. what became that symbol for plastic in our oceans. But none of us had even thought about what the exfoliator ingredient was that was taken off those yeah. sloughing, I think the word is, sloughing yes, off those <laughs> rough, dead skin cells that block up our yeah. pores, you know. Has that, did, you know, that, that knowledge becoming wider um, did that make a change? Definitely. I think we are all becoming skin intellectuals. We're all becoming <laughs> beauty experts. It's incredible that knowledge is power. Like the, the fact that those little micro beads were made of plastic, fish going into the, wa the, the, the water cycle, fish eating them, and then we're eating the plastics. It's literally like we have to be, a, you're poisoning yourself. So looking for brands who say, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to upcycle. Um, also, Lumine are an amazing um, brand who also upcycle ingredients and, and use um, extracts from the berry, com the berry uh, com industry in uh, where they're from. It's, it's about, you know, doing what our grandmas probably would have done. You know, waste not, want not. Use every part of the fruit. Use every part of you know um that that things that you have to hand and just make it work and i think it's going back to that mentality of yeah. just using all the gifts of nature recycling it and then it heals the planet i remember when my daughter i've got twin daughters who are 12 and when my little girl was seven she was looking out the window as we were driving along on an autumn day and she was looking at all the mulch all the leaves had fallen and was turning to mulch and she said to me Mummy, isn't the earth so clever? It's such a good recycler. And I could have burst into tears when a child could just yeah. say and see the obvious. Yes, nothing's wasted. It all goes round and round in a beautiful circle. And why can't we do the same with our beauty? Why can't we do the same with our heavy industries? Let's just like 
a child can call out, you know? <laughs> and plastic Lean so in. often does get in the way, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it's, it is about making choices about refillable, using like glass jars and things like that. Wherever we can, we can help make a difference. So that's the packaging and, and, and also cardboard packaging. And you've got people like Victoria Beckham coming into the industry now, very keen on sustainability, I noticed when I read all of their stuff. Um, yeah. So it's even even the newcomers are yeah, doing it. I think, it's, I think it's one of those things where you can't not have it on your agenda. And I think that's a very good thing. You yeah. know, it, it is just part of, the beauty game now you not only as a marketing hack but i think honestly this is just the future this is where we're at you know and your own makeup then so you you know you've done you've been doing all of this amazing work and then you have just launched well when did you launch literally the 5th of july this summer oh, really recently <laughs> launched your own makeup starting exactly. i'm guessing this is a starting point with a blush oh my goodness yes i've started with the blush three colors that i love the abcs so there's a berry there's a pink and there's a plum which i will send you please give me your details thank you <laughs> um and again it was just really important over 90 percent natural cruelty free not tested on animals vegan it's skincare ingredients which are good for you it's packed full of shea butter and squalene and aloe vera i wanted it to be nourishing for you from the inside out and it's it's something i've worked so hard on and it's just packed full of pigment and for me it's deeply political because it's all about being able to pop and shine on all skin tones i was told for five years it's not worth reformulating so that the formula shines on all skin tones uh, they, I've, I was told, I'm quoting, black people can't afford to buy a luxury price point. What's the point? Racist, misogynistic nonsense that I was confronted with. So to create this product, which is just, it's skincare with color. There's full accountability in the formula, completely bespoke, dreamy, delicious. That was really important to me. And again, just, you know, beauty can be like anything. Beauty can be a prison, it can be a paradise, and I wanted my product to be a paradise and healing and nourishing. And when you you had to, you know, go down that road making all, all your choices, yeah. is it that much harder to create a product that does tick all the boxes in terms of, you know, you've got to think, oh, how am I going to package this? You know, talk to me about your packaging, for example, and and what difference does it make to you, the producer, the businesswoman? You know, you need to mm -hmm. make a profit out of it, and you, you, but equally, your principles are important to you too, as they are to your customers. How much yeah. more complicated does it make the process? I think it's like anything. It's like if you want to make a choice, then you make it work. <laughs> you know, and it, and it's about. And it is all about choices. It's like, you know, people, you can eat organic. Well, you can't eat organic. I mean, it's very expensive, but you can make choices and you can make good choices. And it's like, do we fly it by air or take it by sea in terms of like sustainability? Mm -hmm. And it's just about making, you know, could you use, you know, recycled paper or not? It's, and it's about making good choices for your principles, for the planet, for yourself and trying your best and i think that's also another thing like everyone just wants to do their best and do and just try and just try and make small changes and just that's the way forward just everyone can make some small changes everyone make a little bit like anything small tweaks a big difference to the planet so yeah i tried my best and when you what was the most challenging what was the bit where you go, oh, I'm not sure what the answer is to this one. How do I, how do, I do this bit? What do you think was the most challenging when you were starting to design your of, range? Oh, my goodness. It was breaking through the noise of people saying, this is not for you. This is not an arena that is built for you. This is not, you know, I was told, who's the man really running your business? We'd feel more comfortable if there was a cfo like it's just it was just the misogyny and the racism with yeah. sprinkles of both 
and you know i said to i said to my friend at the time i was like it's am i asking the impossible i want to create foundations i want to create blushes like am i crazy and they said if they can put a man on the moon you can launch a blush and a foundation don't let them bullshit you (laughs) for sure it was yeah it was um wading through the noise and to believe in my vision and my dream and to not all so many people said this is not for you this is a game an arena a playground that was not for you which is why i chose harrods because it's the 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 biggest up yours i can think of to launch with (laughs) i love it and you're simply you don't just get to choose harrods seriously you don't just i mean you know i could quickly go and whip up a nice bath oil in my kitchen with some fresh rosemary in probably and, and take it off to Harrods and Harrods will go oh that's lovely dear not interested <laughs> you know you don't get to choose Harrods surely somewhere like Harrods gets to choose you I mean that doesn't that I was very lucky and I was very uh, it's been five to ten years of graft to make this product I just poured 20 years of beauty experience into it I poured my soul I poured my heart into it and I was lucky enough to have seven exclusivity offers and I chose Harrods and it's about, I think they could see my passion and my dedication. And also for me, this is about diversity, inclusivity and saying that your place is anywhere you want it to be. So I was really very excited to partner with them. Uh, super excited. I would be like <laughs> blown away by it. It's an incredible achievement. And I just love that we're talking what we're talking about is a pot of stuff yeah that you rub on your face to make you look a little bit nicer and yet look at what we're talking about we're talking about these huge is- issues from you know misogyny to sustainability you know and that's part of what the conscious world is i guess in our podcast is there's so much in there's so much in the mix how yeah, we choose to live our lives now, how we relate to the world. You know, it's all linked, isn't it? Yes. And also, you know, I, what the historian me, I love the fact that papers from World War II have been released where Churchill in his secret bunker had a meeting saying that they could not cut the rations of red lipstick because it was within the national interest for people to wear red lipstick because it was morale boosting. So even... God bless him, Winston Churchill knew the power of pigment and what it does to you because it's it's not just about looking good, it's about feeling good and expressing yourself. You know, my other daughter, she said to me, Mummy, you know, when she was at very little, she said, you finger paint for a living, don't you, Mummy? And I was like, yes, I do. And that was the most beautiful explanation of what I do for a job. I finger paint for a living playing with beautiful colours and textures, as if I, you know, I think all artists, all makeup people, like I look out the window, I want to grab the colours from nature, I want to smear them all over my face, and that's what I've been attempting to do all my career, and it's an expression of nature and love and positivity and joy, and that's what it means to me, you know? So yes, I finger paint for a living, and that's why it's important. And make of his connection as well, as you've said before, yeah. especially when it comes to being a makeup artist or creating makeup for people. You know, yes. you're definitely it's such an intimate connection there. And you're touching people's faces and you're chatting and it's like, you know, you get the best gloss from makeup artists. <laughs> oh, always. Always. Oh, it's yeah, one of the nicest, I, I mean, <laughs> when I was on telly seven days a week, you know, often in makeup at five or six in the morning, it was one of the nicest part of the day. You know, you sit there with a cup of coffee and you kind of recap on what happened the day before in the studio or wherever you are. And, uh, you know, and it's just chill out time and you get to know your makeup artist usually really, really well because there's just so much involved, you know, from a person who's had their makeup done for years and years and years, you, there's some ways you just can't look. Like somebody could come along and put a red lipstick on me. I would look so weird. I would not feel like me. That is not me. I don't think it suits me. I've got little granny lips. So you put some red lipstick on those and I'll go, and I'll turn into a little old granny. And I think I cannot look, I can't look like that. I love red lipstick on other people. 
doesn't do it for me at all. It's it's just just such a personal, personal thing. And so I think this is one of the reasons we're weaving into makeup, we're weaving in well-being, we're weaving in philosophy, we're weaving in our approach to the planet and how we want to look after it. It's so deeply personal. I completely agree. And it's just the way you want to look at the world. You can, we could have the same conversation talking about religion or politics or, but you know, I, I choose to look at it through the lens of makeup and there's no, I don't think there's much, there's much difference. It's just how we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we connect with each other, how we celebrate each other. And I think that's really important and how we care for the planet. And you can do that in lots of different arenas. But for me, in my life, I wanted to choose it through the medium of makeup because for me, it was the most delightful thing. And there's art in it, there's business in it, there's connection yeah. in it. As you said, there's Politics. huge joy in it. Yeah, it's about, um, you know, the, the, the thing about beauty, which I think people find very mystifying, is it's very invisible. It's all about feelings. It's all about, like you were saying, connection, feelings, and people quite can't quite quantify it or put their finger on it but we all know the joy of going for that hour walk during the pandemic we all knew the joy of being able to hug and like I remember being in my in my bedroom and I was looking at all these designer handbags I had and I remember saying to myself I'd swap all of those for just one hour coffee with my mates yeah and it just (laughs) and it meant nothing compared to connection and having a giggle and my girls are 12 now and they're tweening up and the sleepover chat is real and the face masks are whipping out and it's all part of that beautiful bonding experience and and you know they're all obsessed with skincare now in a way that we never were because of the tiki tocks and they're so they're so clued up on everything but it's just a part of their growing experience skincare and this and that and you know, they can they whip out a gua sha and they can massage their face and, you know, it helps with their anxiety and this and that. It's all, mm. it is really beautiful and that's all part of it for them. That's part of their journey. And it doesn't have to be expensive, does it? I mean, I remember no. I used to make a whipped egg white, uh, which is quite a stringent face mask for myself <laughs> when, when I was a teenager, when no one else was in the house, of course. That's no one, amazing. No you had to sit really still because actually it would start to get slippy and start slipping off. Yes, <laughs> but, I, did an, I did it. <laughs> it was amazing. I did an <laughs> egg. Um, I did an egg protein mask in my hair and I put hot water and it turned to scramble eggs. That was right. my that was my hair mask. Tail. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my daughters, they, they, uh, Ola, she made coconut. She made a coconut oil body scrub and lip scrub. I'm like, go on, Ola. There's loads of incredible brands like Dr. Pawpaw, um, which I love, and they have face masks and they have things for like under antenna and lip balm. There's so many brands which are really accessible, which are, you know, I love Garnier, but my girls love those masks for the vitamin C masks. There's so many things which are accessible. You can make things at home. You can use incredible brands. I love Boots and Superdrug, and it doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be loving. Yeah, and sustainable, like, you know, you can, and we can yeah. see those. I mean, we've come such a long way in terms of transparency now. So tell us yeah. what are we looking for, you know, for those that haven't really thought much about, okay, what am I slapping on my face? What are we looking for? If we, if we want to be the most sustainable we can be in terms of our choices of our purchases, what kind of labelling are we looking for? Well, I love the Leaping Bunny. That's always one that, that I can trust. In terms and of that's the free and not free, free, right? And yes. what does that does that so does that mean all of the ingredients, everything, nothing has been tested on an animal? Is that what that exactly. means? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And that's and it's such a credible labeling that is highly respected. I have it on my packaging, and they're very strict. Um, you can also look for B Corp, which is incredible as well. B Corp. Um, uh, in terms of sustainability, that's like one of the highest of the high that you can get. Um, and what does that, what, yeah. what can you see that, what kind of a labelling is that called? It's uh, just the it's, letters? It's, yes, it's like, it's a, I'm doing it in my mind. Like a, yeah, you're, you're writing it on the screen as if I can <laughs> see. Some, the some people might be able to see on YouTube, but not everyone will. So you're li- I'm doing it now. Be cool, you're- be cool. I'm so visual, I'm so arty, I'm so visual. Be cool. Um, 
Um, basically, that is one of the, I don't know, it's like the, a beauty Oscar in terms of sustainability, in terms of how things are being farmed or, and organic. And, and it's, just a, it's just one of the biggest ticks you can get. Um, I love Walida. They're an incredible brand who have for over 100 years been incredibly sustainable. Jalik, that's another incredible brand. Also, just where are people getting their ingredients from? making sure there's no like child labor or like dodgy practices. So it's, it's just looking at it from start to finish, not only the sustainability, but the integrity behind the ingredients and there and what is happening. So I think- And it's so about, these labels are, are, are kind of like badges that you have to earn. And you just mentioned the leaping- corner. Yeah, leaping bunnies, they're really uh, quite strict. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you have to prove to them before you can get that? kind of a logo oh my god you have to do so much paperwork and you have uh, there's so many legals to do and there's just very there's a lot of transparency and you have to like give over your formula and very rightly so and it's not something that can be bought it's something that needs to be earned you know so it's um it's they don't they don't hand them out like parties <laughs> right. it has to be you have to earn it through your formulations through your accountability through your lab so that is really trusted. Okay. You've inspired us today. You've kind of reinvigorated me because I'm always, I've always been aware, you know, I've always tried my best to do the, buy the right things, not, not just yeah. the cheapest or the best, but the right yeah. things along the way. And you re-inspired me to keep doing that. It's worth doing that. You know, it makes a big difference. And actually, you know, we can see the direction the beauty industry is taking and yeah. it's all about nourishment and it's all about sustainability and it's it's a much more holistic approach than it ever used to be oh definitely i think we as people have changed as a society as culture and i think beauty and the beauty standards of what we buy into also reflects that so i think we've all like i am a different person post pandemic in terms of what my um what I hold dear, the things that are important to me. It was like a rebirth or restripping. It was such a scary, horrible time. But from all destruction comes creation and positivity. So I think we have all moved on and we know that taking like do you remember I remember calling my mother in my mum lives in central London and I could hear birds chirping. <laughs> and it was like there's bird song in central London. Because we let the planet heal for a little bit. It was, it was quite astonishing. And I think when <laughs> we get out of the way and we help to be a custodian of the planet, things are better. And let's continue that. You know, it doesn't take a world pandemic to realise that we have so much power and when we all make small choices, things can be better. I think that's the lesson I learned and we've all moved on. So thank you, thank you for doing this podcast. This is such an education and you are part of the change, so thank you. Pleasure, absolute pleasure for me. I mean, it's it's an amazing subject to be exploring and to feel inspired by, you know? Oh, We're all doing so something much. different. So what's next for you before I let you go on with your busy, busy day? What's next for you? Oh my goodness, I am gonna be doing more Instagram live on my on my on my Instagram. I'm your Instagram is fun. hilarious. Okay. What, where can we find you on Instagram? Oh please come and say hello at Ate Jewel and at Ate Jewel Beauty. I'll be twirling in pink, having a, a chat club, so please come <laughs> and say <laughs> hi. <laughs> and um launching more products and launching my more blushes and my foundation which are coming up and just you know being a mama to my twin girls and just trying to be, be kind be positive and try and leave the world a better place than i found it that is my mantra and that's what i'll try to do we'll all be thinking of that one today i think thank you so much as i is i know that you're really really busy so to have you on has been phenomenal for us and we really appreciate oh, it thank you thank you this has been a joy thank you <laughs>